Okay, for this next video in the TurboTax uh, 2022 series, we're going to cover how to enter your cryptocurrency transactions into the software and discuss some other things that you should be mindful of as far as 1099s uh, and some changes that we might see in next year. So uh, what we have in front of us is the same fact pattern we've been working with in the previous videos. So we're using the TurboTax self-employed version of the software. Uh, for the 2022 tax return. So we've got our taxpayer here, John Taxpayer. And the fact pattern that we're going to be working with is the following on this slide. So as a carryover from the previous videos, right, John is a, a sales agent in Florida. So we've already had videos where we covered how we entered into W-2, uh, some investment income, interest income, his student loan interests. We covered 1099k reporting for the sale of personal use items and now we are moving on to the trading activity in this coinbase account so john has an individual coinbase account traded some crypto during the year not much as we can see below here now what's important is coinbase uh, does not provide form 1099b's right so form 1099b's are issued by brokers which show a breakdown of each transaction so buy sell cost basis sales proceeds any kind of um, you know adjustments that might be uh, incurred and so we normally see these with stock brokerage accounts so if you have a fidelity account or a robin hood td ameritrade schwab whatever it might be you, you're familiar that you always get a consolidated 1099 that has a 1099b Coinbase does not have to do this yet. Legislation has been passed where they will have to do this in the future, but it's not until the 2023 tax year, so next year. Uh, they also stop providing the 1099K, right? So if you've had a Coinbase account, you've noticed that, well, I got a 1099K that just showed the total amount of proceeds, right? So the total amount of gross transactions, they stopped doing that because it was too confusing. People didn't know how to reconcile the activity. The IRS just assumed all of it was gain, so it was an absolute nightmare. So now you basically have to download the activity detail yourself. Uh, you can also upload the detail into, there's a lot of software providers that will reconcile all of it for you and generate a form 8949. That is very helpful if you have a lot of activity. But in this case with John, he only had three transactions, so he doesn't have to do that. He just has his own little printout chart here. So we're gonna look at the return and see how we enter each of these transactions, how they ultimately flow through the 8949, and then ultimately end up on Schedule D. Okay, so if we go into the tax return here, so where we wanna start, if this is the starting page we're at, this is the My Info page. We're in the federal tab here on the left, uh, and then we're in the wages and income. So wages and income covers obviously wages and all other types of income that you might have. So if we scroll down to the investment and savings portion, you can see here it says, if you got a 1099 B, 1099 INT, dividends, crypto gain or loss support. So this is what we're working with. So uh, this is not interest or dividends, but we do have stocks or cryptocurrency gains, right? So we are going to revisit this section here and enter the cryptocurrency transaction items. Okay, so you can see we've already got the items that we entered in in the previous videos, right? We have our interest income, and then we have the sales of those personal items, uh, the television and the couch that are entered separately. So we're gonna add investments uh to go ahead and start entering our cryptocurrency transactions now what's nice about TurboTax is they do integrate with a lot of other providers and give you the option to download it automatically so you can download your coinbase data automatically right uh, now obviously because this is not a real account i don't have a john taxpayer account so i can't do that for you live uh, but obviously if you have a coinbase account and you want to integrate the two uh, go ahead and do that, right? Go ahead and do that. That might make your life easier. Uh, but what we're going to do here is just enter everything manually, uh, which is obviously more time consuming, but uh, it is what it is, right? So we have cryptocurrency transactions. Go ahead and continue. And it gives us the option to import, upload from the computer, or type it in ourselves. So we're going to type it in ourselves if you want to uh, take the long route here. Okay, so uh, it does ask us to add some additional cryptocurrency info on the account. Now, 
you don't have to enter this because it's not going to show up on the 1099 or sorry the 8949 or the um, uh, or the schedule D but if you had multiple accounts you know it might be a good idea to fill this out just so we can uh, keep it separately right so you'd be able to enter all your coinbase transactions if you have uh, you know a Binance uh, account then you can enter those separately so it, it is good to at least label uh, what custodian you're entering the transactions from and then obviously you know again the crypto service didn't provide a 1099b so we don't have their EIN you could get it uh, from the 1099k but we're just gonna go ahead and continue through there now did we get a 1099b from Coinbase no uh, so we're gonna cl click through Okay, so now here's where we start to enter the sales, right? So you should enter each sale separately. Now there are rules about consolidating sales. Uh, in our case here, because we just have three transactions, we're gonna enter them all separately. So basically we're just entering the, the information that we see uh, on the chart here, right? We're gonna have to input the, the amount of the crypto, uh, what, what type, what was it? So is it Bitcoin or Ethereum? date acquired, date sold, the proceeds from the sale. So that's when we sell it. The cost basis is what we paid for it. And then the gain or loss will be done automatically. And the holding period will done be done automatically by the software. So that's what's uh, also helpful about using the software. So we purchased the cryptocurrency, right? That's the drop down. And then for the first one, we had 0 0.0358 BTC. Uh, when did we receive it, receive or purchase, right? So we, we purchased this on March 15th, 2021. And then we sold this on March 30th, 2022. All right, the proceeds from the sale were 1698. Cost basis was 2000, okay? Um, and we, yeah, we don't have any more info we're gonna need to enter here. That, that would be, for example, if you had to enter adjustments, right? So if you had, uh, this was the loss amount and you needed to report some adjustment, you could you know, check this box and continue through and it'll give you that option. Um, I paid sales expense. Okay, so it asks us, yeah, do we have any selling expenses that aren't included in the sales proceeds? What do they mean there? So what we've done here is in an effort to keep it kind of simple, we, the proceeds and the cost basis reflect the transaction fees. So the, the amount that we received after selling it is already net of the transaction fees, and that's fine, right? Uh, that's okay to just include that in there. The prompt here is asking us if we were reporting these before accounting for those transaction fees, which we're not. So if you have other selling fees, you would check, I paid sales expenses that aren't included in the sales proceeds, and then you would add on those those transaction fees. In this case, no, everything is net of those transaction fees from the proceeds and the cost basis perspective. Okay, so go ahead and click through, and uh, here's our first entry, right? So we've got the sales proceeds, the costs, uh, the gain loss, the loss is $302. Now we're gonna go ahead and add another sale. Okay, so we've got cryptocurrency investment, I purchased it. The next one on the list is our Ethereum. So we just bought one Ethereum. You could put the zeros in there. I guess you know you don't have to. It's just one ETH, right? Uh, the date the investment was purchased was October 1st, 2022. We sold this on December 1st, 2022. So just two months later. The proceeds from the sale, $1,296. Uh, and the cost basis was thirteen twenty-eight. All right. Uh, again, no adjustments here, and we don't have any sales expense issues. So click through. Okay. So there's our next entry. Again, another loss of thirty-two dollars. So you can see here, John's uh, cryptocurrency trading wasn't too profitable, right? He traded just three times and lost money every time. So maybe he won't go back and try that again. Uh, all right. So we're going to add another sale. And this is the last one. Uh, I purchased it, right? I purchased it directly from the broker. Uh, so we have 0 0.1664 BTC. Oops, go ahead and put a space in there. We acquired this investment on August 15th, 2022. 
and then I sold it. Let's see, when did John sell it? December 20th, 2022. Okay, so another short term sale. Proceeds from the sale 2703, and then the cost basis was 4000. Okay, all right, perfect. No adjustments, continue. Uh, none of these apply, right? This transaction's already in there. All right, so here's where we here's what we got. We've got the gain losses, 302, 32, and 1297, and that reconciles with what we have in our record, right? A 302 loss here, $32 loss here, and a and a uh, $1,297 loss here. Now, how does this actually uh, spit out on the return? So we're going to continue on through, and we're going to take a look at the 8949. Uh, just so we can get a sense of um, how this ultimately translates onto the taxes. All right, so we're going to go to, again, we're going to the Tax Tools Center, Print Center, Print Saver Preview. We're going to do a 2022 preview. Open up the forms here. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so we can see, just to quickly recap, um, what we've done so far. So this is John's tax return. We've entered his wages, the investment income. Um, you know, he's, he's got some other income um, from his uh, Schedule C business. And so what's been changed here, apart from overall the numbers on page one, right, that is taxable income, we have updated 8949 and Schedule D, okay? So 8949, here are the uh, the two entries for the short or so the short term transactions, right? So we sold that one ETH and then the point one six six four BTC. These amounts uh, were bought and sold within the year, so that's why they're short term. And then the um, long term transaction that was the BTC that was held for more than a year, right? So we held this, we purchased this on March fifteenth, held it for. A year and 15 days before selling it so that's why this loss transaction is reported in part two on the long-term section okay um, so yeah that covers it for for this entry the other thing that you need to update uh, and this and this is done when you finalize the return TurboTax asks you these questions but on page one they have this question here for digital assets right at any time during the year did you receive sell, exchange, get, or otherwise dispose of digital assets, right? This includes crypto. Uh, so when you finalize the return, and we'll do that on another video, it's gonna prompt us for these questions. We would indicate yes, right? Because we have we have definitely bought and sold cryptocurrency, which is a digital asset, okay? Okay, so that covers it for this video. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, check out the rest of the playlist for the videos before this and the ones that uh, are, are will be following afterwards. All right. Thank you so much.